Hello. Steve, you are not horizontal. Yeah, I am. We'll go vertical then. <laughs> What's, wrong Whatever, with What's wrong with this? You're sideways. Is this intentional? Are you trying to be funny? What are you, funny guy? <laughs> no. Hold on. Are I, you on I, the toilet? I promise, you, I promise you I'm not fucking funny. Uh, okay, let me try it this way then. All right, shit. Is this better? Yeah. yeah. Do I gotta go vertical? That's uh, weird though. Yeah, that's you, fucking weird. You're using your phone? Yeah. Oh, maybe that's it. Yeah. Good. Well, like, I don't have like a, you know, a professional setup. Uh, I have a laptop and I have a phone. So, well, we all make do these days with what we got, right? What are you well, drinking? I the phone. Hmm? Steve, what are you drinking? This is a rye and ginger. At first, I thought it was all rye, and I was like, okay, okay, now we're talking. Jenna, I think you're the urine. only one doing the all vodka with two olives. That's Jenna's quarantine drink. All vodka, two olives? Olives are important. <laughs> Vegetables. Well, it is now five o'clock, so this makes it happy hour, I guess. That's right. That's, fucking great. That's why that we record at five o'clock, so we can drink. See, we're responsible adults. Uh, in some universe, sure, yeah. All right, it's five right. o'clock here. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Jenna, you're, just... you're in you're in Vancouver now, Jenna. Yeah, I am. Just for another couple weeks. Oh yeah, what are you doing out there? Uh, my parents live out here and I got laid off. So I was like, you know what? Instead of sitting at auto, in Ottawa in my apartment by myself, I'll come out and sit in my parents' apartment and eat their food. Yeah, well, that's smart. With no snow. Uh, apparent, yeah, no, there, well, there's no snow here at this, con is this current moment. Not yet. Yeah. But you know what? There's always just another snowfall around the way, you know? That's right. What it's like here in the capital, you know? We got fucking snow all year round. <laughs> So Steve, by the way, everyone that's listening, we're talking to Steve Love, huge star. You know him, you love him. He's been a staple huge on our star. show since we were on the radio. So <laughs> oh, yeah. here we go again. <laughs> He's Never stuck forget. with us. <laughs> Never forget. Um, Steve, one of the reasons I was excited to see you was to see how your hair's doing because I've always been so jealous of your flowing locks and I hate you because it still looks good. Really? Well, kind of, it's like swoopy. Yeah, no, it's just out of control. Listen, I never thought I would say I would suck a dick for something, but I would suck a dick for a haircut. I'll be well, honest. Well, I do have clippers, and <laughs> I'm not afraid of the virus. You're not? A, which virus are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, that's right. The gays lived through the 80s. Bring it, COVID. <laughs> Well, that was well, free Jesse, right? <laughs> yeah, we didn't all you make it, You know what, it, though? You know what, though? Speaking of sucking dick, um, I actually saw this woman that swears that if you put semen into your smoothies, you will stay COVID-free. Yeah? Yeah, that's what Where she's been I doing. Where can find her channel? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where's her, where's her self-help uh, life coach channel? She she's have been... a... Doing it for she three years. She definitely has an Instagram business page. Right. Where's her donation page? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sponsor my lifestyle. I tell people to put semen in their smoothies. <laughs> like, is it, a, is it a good source of protein? Has that ever been proven? I know that it has. I know that there's people that, uh, that swear by it as like a skincare routine. Well, I looked into that, and that is not true. And I think that is something that a man made up to like convince his girlfriend to let him jizz on her face. Well, it doesn't have to be, you know, right out the bottle. You can like you can have <laughs> semen on hand, right? Yeah, uh, the consistency changes. It's weird. I mean, uh, we've all laid there a little too long before grabbing the Kleenex, and you know, it starts running, mm -hmm. and it's not good. So. <laughs> Steve, uh, what I'm hearing, I'm stuck on the fact that there are things in this world you will do, you know, if you want something bad enough. All my years of sexually harassing you at Yuck Yucks, I never thought I would hear those words come out of your, your mouth. So thank you for that material. All you needed was to go to barber college. <laughs> hey, I'm doing my own hair. It's not that bad. Oh, yeah. No, it, uh... Well, don't look. <laughs> don't look at the back. Here I was. Do you want here the truth I was or do you want the truth? 
I thought Jesse stuck one someone off for a haircut. I was wondering how you got your haircut, Jesse. I did it myself. Yeah. It's very choppy at the back, though. Don't ask. No, but like considering you did that yourself, that's pretty impressive. I gotta say. Thank you. Yeah, hard lines. You know. <laughs> it's yeah. Okay. This is the only this angle the anybody ever looked, This is the most you've ever looked like a character from Vikings. What's that? <gasps> you haven't seen the show Vikings? No. It's a show about Vikings. But it's like full of Viking sex. But don't, wouldn't they have like long hair? Like Game of Thrones, long hair? Yeah, but like they do like a long mohawk. It's like shaved on the sides and then like super long, you know, up top. Like a, like a, like a supercharged uh, like mohawk mullet hybrid. All right. The guy's really yeah. hot, the lead actor. Sounds actors hot, really. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's now you've sold me. So there we go. Uh, I know it's in your rider, Steve, not to mention Game of Thrones, but I just did, so <laughs> there we go. No, no I, when did I ever say that? I don't know. It's a rumor about you that goes around the club. Like, if anybody interviews you, they're not to discuss Game of Thrones because it's so played out and you have other accomplishments. I get... I, I, didn't, know that I, I didn't know that I was being interviewed. Oh, uh, yes, this is a very serious program right up there with Diane Sawyer and Oprah. Didn't you know that? No, did not know that. Um, well, uh, if you want to talk about, uh, the show that, uh, that I was on that one time five years ago, we can talk about that. Well, I mean, it's not really this super popular show or anything. Like, I don't know a lot of people that watched it. Yeah. The, the past tense there kind of says it all. Cause, uh, I mean, the show's over now and, uh, you know, in the, the way it ended kind of, Let's just say there won't be a lot of people rewatching it in quarantine, you know? Or they just won't watch the final season because I heard that it's the worst. It kind of is. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to uh, talk too much too much trash about the ending because it's like, you know, the guys who made the show, you know, they just they put me in the show out of the kindness of their hearts, and I don't want to like. Right. I don't want to be, I don't want to appear ungrateful, but if I'm giving like my honest critique of the last, the last two seasons, to be honest, I, they, there was a fucking sharp decline in the quality of the show. Um, that's After just, your episode, right? Literally, honestly though, my episode <laughs> wasn't even that good. <laughs> okay, so I other didn't. Than me, other than me, season six, episode eight is not one of the best ones that year. Season six, episode eight. So that is your episode. I really didn't want to go into a big Game of Thrones discussion, but here we are. So since it was five years ago, there's probably a lot of people listening that have no idea what we're talking about. You were on an episode. How did you get cast on that episode? Um, well, from doing, uh, from doing my impressions of the, of the characters on the show and then uh, putting that on YouTube. And then from, uh, from there, Jimmy Kimmel's people found me and they put me uh, on an episode of Kimmel with uh, Kit Herring when Kit Harrington was being interviewed on that show, and then when uh, when the creators Dan and David uh, saw me on that show, they sent me an email and asked me if I wanted to do their show, which was uh, a, a huge huge thrill for me, and still to this day is probably my biggest accomplishment. I Did mean, you believe that it was them actually emailing you when you got that email? Because I would have been like, oh bullshit. I, I actually. <laughs> So I actually did believe them, and then my a agent convinced me that 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 it was probably not them, and I was like, "Fuck, man, what a bummer!" But then they looked into it, and it was actually totally legit. So I felt uh, I felt vindicated by that. You know what I mean? Well, and that's how we met you, is because we had you on our morning show to do your impressions. Well, that's how I met you. I'm sure. Yeah, Jesse I know. Me and Jesse go a little bit further back than that, right? But, uh... Uh, but we did. We had you on to do impressions because we had to do a Game of Thrones segment on our show every week that oh, yeah, was that's hilarious. Right. Um, we would do it in three seconds or less, right? It would be like three words uh -huh. to describe the episode. And the best part was, is neither Jesse nor I, nor our producer, ever watched a single moment of that show. But Philippe- That's right, that's right. You know, smoke and mirrors. <laughs> Oh, and our, our program director thought it was so funny that we would try to like hack our way through this segment having no idea what we were talking about. But we were nervous because Game of Thrones fans are serious stuff. Like they don't want any yeah. facts wrong. Well, oh, yeah, no. And uh, yeah, and people wonder why radio is on the decline. 
Uh, <laughs> That's uh, that's really funny that they made you do that, and that they just did not give a fuck that you guys actually didn't know anything about the show. Because, yeah. like, yeah, I I a hundred percent agree with you, Jesse. How uh, how committed uh, the the Thrones fans, the Thronies as I call them, are like they I I go to the I go to like um, Con of Thrones, uh, or at least I did go in the three years that it's been around, it's basically like a Star Trek convention for Game of Thrones. Uh, and like, people know who I am. They're like, that guy from, you're the guy from YouTube who did the cameo on the show. They are, they are so, they're so committed to detail. Their attention to detail is like, uh, is crazy, especially for book readers who then get into the show and point out all the things that are wrong about the show uh, according to their standard of adaptation, I guess. Well, Steve, as beautiful and talented as you are, I feel like there's a reason your episode is memorable. Um, oh, yeah, because of, <laughs> of the gay stuff. <laughs> gay <laughs> stuff? Gay, straight. You got finger blasted up the ass. Straight guys like Not that, too. Not really. Not really. But I told, I told you, the, 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 the actor I was working with, Ricky Champ, when, when we went in to film the close-up, of the hand going down my pants. He was like, I've got to get pretty close, mate. I'm going to have to go in under your underwear. Are you all right with that? Are you comfortable with that? I was like, man, we're fucking actors, bro. Like, fucking do what you gotta do. Like, you know? Did you clench? <laughs> no, well, I actually, yes. As, a, is, as the character would, I clenched my, I clenched up, you know? I didn't want to, you know, cause it's, it's got, a, it's, 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 it's called acting. The kid, the kid would be clenching up, so I clenched up. Yeah, but he clenching, never. But clenching me. makes it hurt more. Just word to the wise. Relax. Oh yeah, no, it's like chugging a beer, right? You want to loosen. You want to loosen everything up, you know. Um, I don't know. Are you single? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm single as fuck. Do you date really a lot? I'm just curious if any woman has asked you to put on any sort of voice in the bedroom when she finds out that you're really good at impressions, especially with Game that's, of Thrones. They're hunky characters. That's literally a bit that I do on stage was, was when, the, when the whole Game of Thrones thing was at the height of, its, of, of it happening to me, was one of, the, one of the people I was seeing at the time asked me to do a Jon Snow impression during. And I, I, I turned that into a, a stand-up bit in my act. So it's funny that you mentioned that. Uh, Cause yeah, it did happen. And but did that's, you do it? It's only, it, only that one time, only that one time. Every time, every, every other time that I get asked to do a character or a voice, it is outside of the act of uh, fucking. And they never, and they never ask me uh, if they can jam a finger up my ass either. <laughs> I didn't even think to ask that. I'm just thinking of the voice and the impression. Did you actually no, yeah, they, do the impression? No, they just go ahead and do it. They don't ask. Right. <laughs> and then you thank them later. You know what? Honestly, don't knock it till you try it. That's all I'll say. That's right. Wow. We're learning a lot about you here, Steve. Yeah, the male anus is an erogenous zone. Sure is. Sure is. Um, if so if you, that's too raunchy... We but wait a second. Out. Did you do it? Jenna's tried to ask three times. Did you do it during sex? Uh, like... Not the finger uh, blasting, the accent. Uh, yeah. Kinda, it was like my heart wasn't in it because I was kind of uh, made uncomfortable by the whole experience. Well, yeah, because I feel like it'd be a bit insulting. Like, bitch, you don't want me, you want Jon Snow. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, <laughs> I, yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, you could have been a I, dirty Jon Snow. I, you could have been just, dirty with it. I think I, impro I think I improv the line like, I'm gonna fuck you like I fuck the Boltons. <laughs> that wasn't a very. That wasn't the best impression, but uh, that was like I think I'm pretty sure I came up with that on the spot. So or I'm gonna jump pretty proud of over for that. your face. <laughs> yeah. Hey, better she asked for John to start snowing. <laughs> better she asked for John Snow than Donald Trump, which is one of your other good ones. Oh yeah, that would be, that would be like. <laughs> I'm be about years. to hand you my stimulus package. You and all the other countries are gonna want my goods. My goods are the best goods in the in the world. You know, at least if you disappointed her, you could say you were just in character. 
That's true. Yeah, no, that's an out that I uh, probably should have taken advantage of. It's like, I didn't disappoint you sexually, Jon Snow did. That's right. Okay, so uh, as you may have guessed by now, Steve Love is a stand-up comedian. Ha ha ha, yuck, yuck, yuck. And uh, stand-up clubs are closed right now. It's been what? It's been over a month and a half since any of us have been on stage. It's going to be a while, too. And you know what? When this all started, I told myself I was going to have regular rehearsals and make the chihuahuas watch my, do my set and stuff so it stayed mm. fresh. I have not done that. So I'm like, oh, how yeah. much of my act do I even remember? You know, it's going to be a whole new world. Well, the thing is, what I find is just uh, like certain bits are just going to be... Irrelevant. You're just going to have to discard them because there's, I don't know, there's, it's like a, it, it is like a whole new world when, you know, when things finally do open up, which for, you know, comedy clubs, theaters, bars is going to be a long time. It's going to be a while before those are allowed to operate again, I think. I mean, because obviously I'm not educated on the subject, but... Uh, it's going to be a lot of a lot of hacky a lot of hacky uh quarantine material uh that that we see I think out of the gate when when things do start to open up. Yeah. And it's a lot funny of you people... mentioned the rehearsal part of it cuz yeah like I I I haven't found myself, you know, I haven't been able to uh write as much because like I just don't know what to write about cuz everything's going to say is going to seem hacky and played out because it's all I all all there is to all the new stuff in my life is related to being home all the time and worrying about this fucking invisible virus out there. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's going to be weird when, but like obviously, you know, most of most of you and me, like our acts, will survive. Like in terms of the material, I mean, we, we don't have to discard, uh, you know, all the bits that we did before the virus. Um, but there's going to be some new, you know. Like everybody's gonna have to like address it, and then you just like move on with you know your act. I would think. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, what was the question again? I kind of got off on. I don't even listen to myself when I'm talking. I don't know what the question was. That's why we're the messy podcast. It was just about stand up and uh, how that's changing. And one thing that I'm impressed with is you jumped on the bandwagon very early on of doing daily Facebook lives. Now I know there's Mm -hmm. a lot of people doing them right now that probably shouldn't be but yours are entertaining and they're consistent what made you want to start doing that uh just uh i mean i think you can agree that you know stand up is very therapeutic for people like us who thrive on uh attention being the center of att- who thrive on being the center of attention right uh so you know the the free therapy i was getting or should i say paid therapy i was getting from stand up was uh well now that that's not a thing in my life anymore i just i I just wanted another way to just like just talk some shit for an hour a day and uh you know i saw that you know our 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 friend and colleague trevor thompson started trevor's pad every night and i was like you know what i should do i should do that i'll take over the uh the morning show spots and by morning show uh i started at noon you know what i mean and uh I find that it's just um, like you guys with all your experience in radio and now with the podcast is uh, the only way to, the only way to get better at, you know, talking for a living is to do it. Right. And I feel like it's a, it's a good experience in terms of like, whenever I inevitably start my own podcast or with like a partner or something, uh, this is good experience to have getting used to just talking to I mean, a screen just used to talking, talking <laughs> on air and having, you know, people listening and commenting, you know, um, I think it's hard for people like you and Jesse to talk to someone and not get that reaction though. That's uh, probably, yeah. you know, I always tell people who want to get into television, especially like news and television reporting and stuff. I said, do radio first, because it's mm-hmm. really hard to tell a story when you don't have an audience in front of you. Mm -hmm. than compared to, you know, when you do have that audience and you're speaking to a large group of people. Yeah, like sometimes I make myself laugh, but obviously I'm easy to please because I make myself laugh all the time. Uh, But like, yeah, not having the visceral reaction of a crowd laughing right right after you make a joke does make it fucking weird and uncomfortable because you're like, did I do do good? Was Was that funny? 
And there's no one there to be like, yes, yes, it was fine. It was fine. Well, they do. They type it in the comments, but it comes like five minutes later and it's delayed and it's a whole mess. That's what I don't like about Facebook. Yeah, no, I don't like, I don't, I don't particularly like doing the lives. I would way rather be doing stand up, you know, but uh, you know, it's, it's good. As long as you have something to talk about, right? That's why I do the, that's why I do the Instagram polls so that I will, I'll have something to talk about on the air. I don't have to like, come up with an itinerary for subjects that I want to get to, you know, things can just happen organically when you have like a, just a something to discuss with yourself. Cause in, in my case, I'm just doing it by myself. So. Yeah. But you're also talking like you're having conversations more than doing material. And I find there's a couple that have been able to get away with it. Carla Collins, who we had on the podcast, she's killing it with her quarantine comedy queen every week. Trevor was doing well. Uh, but I feel like it's not, I, I haven't yet done like stand up on live because I don't think it would come across without the laughs. If you're the type that yeah. feeds on that energy. Yeah. Well, and it's important for everyone to evolve. And right now you're evolving in quarantine. So you have to evolve your craft. When you get back to a stage, then you can do a, a traditional stand up set. But yeah. right now, I think people are looking more for engagement and per, like a personal touch. Yeah. They are looking yeah. for what radio is and why people enjoy and listen to that medium i think is because they want that one-to-one -one communication they want to see a different fucking face i love my parents that i'm staying with right now but i swear to god i love seeing other people's faces <laughs> i hear you man i like I, I, this this thing has like given like you a reason to just like reach out to people more just like even like like even people who live in different cities i'm reaching out to more now than i did before when you know shit was normal you know what i mean like you're facetiming the people that you would normally see in your day-to-day -day lives but you're also right. you know you're also reaching out on facetime to people you wouldn't normally see in your day-to-day -day lives right yeah oh yeah yeah and i do feel like that change that slowdown that we all needed I, I was myself on a hamster wheel before this like gym work yuck yuck gym work yuck yuck podcast yeah and it's like we never slowed down and now this kind of made us do that yeah absolutely i i just uh I, I don't, yeah. No, but yeah, the whole, the, the, everything that you just talked about is kind of the reason why we invited you and we're hoping to invite other local comedians on as well to kind of shoot the shit because we want to make sure that you guys are all right. We want to continue having you practice your craft and being funny and engaging. And so people don't forget about the fact that stand-up comedy, it's one of my favorite things to do in Ottawa. I am no stand-up oh, comedian, yeah. but it is one of my favorite things to do is to go to a show. And, you know, I think people still need that. And I hope that the industry rebounds stronger than maybe it was before. If we can continue to give y'all platforms to continue to show people how funny you are. And now a whole other side where now you're personal and engaging. And I always tell Jesse this, that people like that side of him, even though he hates showing it. Hmm. Jesse, are you not, you don't like people seeing your sensitive side? No, I like people to believe that I'm plastic and made of wax. <laughs> mm, you just want to be like a Madame Tussauds, Britney oh, Spears, wax statue. Heaven. Right? Heaven. <laughs> yeah. If I could be a hologram every podcast, even better. Yeah. But yeah. Jenna, but, made, Jenna made a good point a second ago, which is that, yeah, going to a club, going to a stand-up club, a stand-up show is such a different experience. And that's what people who like only, only consume stand-up comedy through Netflix or through YouTube or whatever, they, they don't get that the vibe you get from going to a comedy club which is such a good it's such a good night out is going to the going to the club having some drinks and and seeing a great show and yeah when when things do reopen it might start out weird it might it, you might have to you know it might have to be a situation where everybody's six feet apart or whatever capacity is lower clubs don't make as much money well they'll still be making more money than they are right now fuck but it's 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 gonna be I think I think you're right, Jenna, and that the rebound will will make this stronger. Is people people need to get out, man. After this, man, people are gonna be like They need to laugh. Streets. They need to laugh. Yeah. yeah. The That's one thing I'm not excited for is all the people that have had stand up on their bucket list that shouldn't and that are uh, like, I'm gonna do it once and for all. Yeah, that's what we need is more comedy hobbyists. Yeah, like us. <laughs> 
Okay, so, and, you're, and like Jenna said, yeah, stand-up's one of the only things that you can't translate online, at least in my opinion. You can get online and sing, dance, play an instrument, but telling jokes without the laughs. Mm. Yeah, I really, I really believe, and I've, and tons of people will tell you this, I really believe that stand-up is the only art form that you need a live audience to practice with. Right. And it can't just be like, you know, your five family members who you're staying with, it has to be- Strangers. Like, a, it has to be a legit, a room of, yeah, a room of people who don't know you. Yeah. For the most yeah. part, you know? And that is that is the weird thing about doing material online is like, you, you, you just feel, maybe you can relate to this, Jesse, is you just feel silly when you're giving yeah. your prepared, like, material to no one, but, your phone or your laptop camera and you're not getting anything back and it's just like should i should i keep doing this or should i just fuck right off because i'll fuck right off i think yeah <laughs> it's i think it's really gonna weed out who some strong comedians are even at the top top levels because it's gonna go from just jokes to really interesting storytelling i agree and I, not I everyone can tell a story <laughs> yeah yeah. Well, this this process for me, I mean, th from doing a from doing the live show every day, I'm learning more about you know my like what my thoughts on certain things are just from having this you know me monologuing off the top of my head every day for you know thirty thirty to forty minutes or whatever, and I I, I think that's going to help me as a stand up immensely because frankly as as a stand up I was. I was like not really um, voicing opinions on things. I'm more just, you know, trying to be funny, but you, it's, it's, it's enough to, you know, you, you want to be funny, but you also want, um, you want people to understand your point of view and to relate to it is what stand up is really about. Right. I think you gotta, we gotta bring the jokes, but it's nice to also have a side of yourself that comes out that people find some truth in, you know? So on that note, let's get your funny opinion on some of the latest headlines, shall we? Oh God, that's too much pressure, go on. Steve Love on coronavirus headlines. Uh, here we go, where do we start? Okay, how's this? A swingers club in Illinois believes it has found a loophole to open. The owner's son now lives at the club and isn't charging people for the orgies, so it's not a business, he's just throwing house parties for friends. Which is still not... <laughs> But also, sorry, I didn't read these headlines ahead of time, so some of them might be- but Wait, is, but he's not, the people he's orgying with aren't all living there too. No, but well, also it's, it's not a business. If he's not charging them, then he's not making any money. Yeah, but you're also not supposed to have gatherings of more than five people, right? Right. But because they're swingers, that you get the husband and wives, uh, the, that counts as one household. So you've got five <laughs> different households, five different households, two people each, let's say, they got a 10 person orgy right there. You got a proper orgy if you got 10 people, you know? And yeah, cause it's not a business, right? It's just a gathering, you know, and it's, and it's sort of, what I, what I think about this COVID thing, also, by the way, I love that they said, uh, like the swinger found a loophole, cause that's really what <laughs> they're looking for. So I'm, I'm a loophole. But um, they, I, I find that like, with all the, the social distancing and stuff, it's really up to whoever, you come into contact with how distant they want to be, right? It's it's uh you know I'm I'm not too choosy because like, I mean I go out to the store like every day. Uh, Steve, love that's bad. Would you would you break? It's for essential shit. It's essential well, shit. Okay. Oh, I thought and you I'm said sexual. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that no, is no, is that gonna, not essential? <laughs> well, I was gonna oh. ask you, would you break quarantine to hook up with someone right now? Well, fuck yeah, if they're clean. What, are you going to take their temperature? <laughs> no, I, yeah, I, I'll just take their word for it. <laughs> take their word for it like I always do. Back to, what the, back to the gays in the 80s. You clean? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, aid. <laughs> yeah, fuck. Basically, right. long story short, I am ready for the fucking orgies now. Yeah, let's yeah me too. I think a lot of singles are at the orgy point in their lives right now. It's been discussed. Like <laughs> me and my housemates, we've discussed it. <gasps> you better zoom me for that, because they're all boys. <laughs>
And you know, I know, I believe Steve is feeling it because he started this show by saying, uh, I would suck a dick for a haircut. Yeah, unfortunately, none of my roomies cut hair. No. <laughs> Can't yeah. always get what you want. No. Okay, ready? Next headline. This one's a doozy. A woman in England who predicts the future using asparagus says she sees, quote, really, really great news on coronavirus coming in May. Oh, well, it when I heard she cut open a piece of asparagus to check for auguries, I could tell this lady was on the level. That's not how she does it, Steve. What she does, what she she's an asparamancer. And she casts the asparagus onto the ground and it creates a pattern and then she interprets the patterns and she says she's able to interpret the patterns to 90% uh, accuracy. <laughs> and she goes to her wow. predictions each year and she thinks, yep, that's happened. Yep, that's happened. Wow. All right. And so she's literally like an old Viking sorceress, who, which is like, they, that's a thing that the Norse would do is they would cast the sticks and read them whichever way they landed. So she's updated it for 2020 by using a health food product as opposed to just regular old rune sticks. Good for that lady, because you know what? And, and what, it's a, a Sparacaster, is that the? A Sparamancer. A Sparamancer. See, like, that's, that's just a Sexy. hot job title. Yeah, I mean, like... <laughs> Where do, where do you go to school for that? A Sparamancer school? You know, Fucking... I've heard of people, like, I know in the Asian culture, it's like with the green tea leaves. Like, after you drink your green yeah. tea, the leaves, you can, someone can read your future or whatever on it. But asparagus, like, you, you pick the one, like, thing that makes your pee smell funny? I know. I think you can test for AIDS that way. With the <laughs> Check the saliva. Um, but, uh, dude, yeah. Di did, you, did you know that there's a gene for smelling the pee smell and there's a gene for producing the pee smell? Yes, and some people don't smell after they've eaten it and some people can't smell the pee. Yeah, exactly. I'm one of those people that has both because I'll fucking, I'll have weird piss for days if I eat asparagus. <laughs> Me too. Hey, I wonder I'm if that's- pee for a week. I, I wonder if that's the same gene that lets you smell cavities. Remember Kim Kardashian talked about that on one episode? You know that rotten hamburger smell breath that some people get? I can get? smell it. Oh, yeah. Me too. Oh, yeah. But some people can't smell it. And Steve, there's some comedians at Yuck Yucks that have oh. it. We'll talk Funny. after. The amount of time I've had people with absolute cave breath come and tell, tell me their life story right into my face, I just makes me... It makes me happy there's some social I hope I hope there's like uh some social distancing policies when the clubs open up again because yeah I know exactly what <laughs> what you're smells like rotten to. hamburger meat that's the best way I can describe it Jen I get diaper breath <laughs> sometimes it yeah. smells like rotten oh. ass <laughs> my headline Jesse was the woman that uh drinks semen to stay healthy oh yeah <laughs> Sorry, she's I just been doing wanted it to hear. For, yeah, she's been doing it for three years and says she hasn't had a cold or been sick for three years. She's 32 years old. She freezes she located it. located in, in uh, Ottawa, in the greater Ottawa region? No, in the <laughs> UK, unfortunately. But I feel like we could have a side business here, Steve. Is the travel ban <laughs> still on? Yeah, I'll promote it and you can supply. Okay. <laughs> what about yeah, me? You can Does supply it, it as well. Do you, need it, do you need it fresh out of the... Fresh out of the the udder, or do you? Does it like? Can it be I think stored what he does. Her boyfriend, she puts it fresh out of the udder, as you called it, in directly into ice cube trays, and then they freeze it. Man, that takes some serious accuracy to get, <laughs> get it in the ice cube tray. That's a lot of jizz. That is. I could probably. Fill, I think I could fill one cube like slot. I think I could, one I think cube, I could fill one it. cube, not all I think of I could. I think I could fill a cube, yeah. Well, you've got a lot of time on your hands. That's the this thing, depends how long, depends how long it's been since I've been milked, you know what I mean? <laughs> I do know, keep talking. Yeah, I know, <laughs> like if I go a week without milking myself, uh, then yeah, we're talking a full. You a could full get a time. row? <laughs> no, just a cube. A cube. Just I don't a cube. Know, yeah. I don't want to make promises I can't keep, you know what right. I mean? <laughs> okay, two more headlines quick. We're running out of time. Fucking Zoom. Um, here, how about this one? This is something Jenna would do. A woman in Kentucky is going viral after she cut a hole in her N95 mask to make it easier to smoke her cigarette. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
so much smart. So when they asked her about it, she goes, it's not to smoke. It makes it easier to breathe. Those right. things are stuffy. And she's not wrong, because last week we had a story about a guy that suffocated. Oh, yeah. That's sad. So, but just don't be that stupid. I don't um, know if you've ever had an how did he N95 suffocate? mask. How did he awful. suffocate? He wasn't getting enough oxygen, because they're very tight. Well, if his, if his lungs are already that compromised, he's probably, you know, should be the one of the thinning the herd types. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> I think... I think, uh, you know, look, if the, the lady needs, to, if, the la if it makes it easier to breathe, then you know what? She should be allowed to do that and, you know, uh, have everybody cough into the open hole that, you know, is, is made in her mask. See, so I thought can... that the open hole was for easy access. Yeah, that, well, maybe, maybe <laughs> that's just the you? subtext of, that's the subtext of her reasoning for, uh, but did you see a picture? Jesse, it wasn't a yeah. small hole. Well, it was I, think, I think I saw a yeah, video of big. this lady, actually. She goes yeah. into like a convenience store and the guy's like, yeah, oh yeah, it does make it easier to breathe. I'm gonna try that out too. Like, I and love if it's a picture, I'm thinking, it wasn't actually an N95, it was a, one of the stupid blue ones, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I don't know what an M95 is. Sounds like a machine gun. Yeah, <laughs> no, like, those are the ones Sounds like one there. of the, Sounds like one of the guns that Daddy Trudeau just banned. <laughs> Sorry. Daddy, Daddy Justin. Right. Daddy Justin, yeah. Yeah, ever since he grew that facial hair, people are like, oh my God, we really do have the hottest prime minister. <laughs> it was like, bro, I, have, you been in, have you been to New Zealand? Because uh, I, forget, I forget her Jacinda. name. Jacinda. Jacinda. Thank you, Jenna. She's That's got a Jacinda. stripper name, too. Everybody oh, yeah. welcome Jacinda to the stage. Back. Yeah, but in, in, in New Zealand, I feel like names like that fly better because everything just sounds nicer with a Kiwi accent. Like, Listen, you know, I can't do it. This, is the, this is my sister, Jacinda, you know? <laughs> like, I'm Rory, this is my sister, Jacinda, and she's just a nice old lady or something. Uh, right. That's actually one of, my, one of my poll questions on Instagram today was, it, it, the subject was uh, accents, and I wanted to pose this question to you. If somebody talks with a like a kiwi accent do you automatically just assume that they're nice because i kind of do yeah like it's just a very nice person voice i don't I and don't, all never... the kiwis i know are really nice though yeah that's the that's the thing is like but what's and... funny is the australian accent is quite similar however mm -hmm. some australians sound like total assholes yeah but that's 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 a cultural connotation because yeah you think of like you know Right, you're gonna play some footy today, and then like you know, like I'm gonna uh, huck it in your dumper lighter. You know, that's kind of like what Auss Aussie guys say. That's just the vibe they put out. I don't know what it is. It's so, like my name's Declan. You want to fucking you want a root? Yeah, that's what they call fucking. <laughs> you want a root? You're gonna fucking let me root you later? <laughs> We're about to get cut off. That yeah. would be the best time to cut. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna stop. Steve just, Love, just, you can root stop, us right anytime. There. Root us anytime. So Steve Love, when can we find Steve Love on Facebook, Dr. Steve Love on Instagram, Facebook Live every day at noon? I, I think I wanna I think I wanna switch over to YouTube. But yeah, add me on Instagram, it's Dr. Steve Love. You can follow my YouTube channel, that's also Dr. Steve Love. I learned a thing or two about branding from when I was a a popular YouTuber. So uh, yeah, it's Dr. Steve Love is all my social media and YouTube channel. So that's where you can find me. Thanks. Thanks for having me, by the way. Thanks so Anytime. much. It's so fun. We'll see you at so the fun, gym guys. when it reopens. We all go to the same gym. So see fucking you there. Cheers to, I'll fucking drink water to that, bro. Cheers. 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 Woohoo. Blink.